Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Computer Science video. In this video we're going to be looking at magnetic stripe cards. What are they? What are they used for? And how do they work? Okay, so first of all, what are they? Well, they're small, usually credit card sized pieces of plastic or paper that contain data stored on a ferromagnetic strip, which is this one here, the black strip. Uh, usually it's black or grey, and that data which is stored on there, we're going to look at how that's stored in a minute, that can be read really, really quickly using a magnetic stripe reader, which you see here. All you do is you take the card, swipe it through the reader the right way around, and the, uh, the little reader there can interpret the data stored and it sends it on to the terminal or computer or whatever you're using. And they're really, really common. They're common in uh, retail store loyalty cards. So when you go shopping and they ask if you've got a, you know, a loyalty card, then they'll, you just swipe your card. And same thing goes for hotel key cards. If you stop in a hotel, then often they won't give you a key to the room, a physical key. They'll just encode a key card with the correct passcode that matches the passcode to the door to that room. Uh, also, staff access cards, they can uh, encode those cards in exactly the same sort of way. And really, really common on train tickets. On the back of a train ticket, you'll see these so that as the conductor's moving through, he can swipe that ticket to check that it's a genuine ticket and you haven't just printed it yourself on your own printer at home. Okay, so how do they work? Well, I've created a couple of scratch animations to show you how they work. So here on the back of the card, we've got the ferromagnetic material. And this material, it's almost like millions of tiny little bar magnets are contained on the back of it. It's this iron, and this iron can be magnetically polarized by running a magnetic current through it. And normally on these cards, that, so for instance on the credit card size ones, it will be encoded into one of three tracks. You can encode all three tracks, but more commonly, most readers especially can only read, they're only designed to read one of those three tracks. And depending on which of the three tracks is designed to read, uh, on this data you can either store it in track one, which is up to 79 characters, track two, up to 40 characters, and track three up to 107 characters. So in that whole region there, with all the polarized bits, you can only store up to 40 characters. And um, which actually, although it doesn't sound a lot, most of the time that's perfectly adequate because really, if you've got a store card, all they're really interested in getting from you is your account number that they've got with them, which is probably only 20 characters anyway, 20, 25. Or before we had chip and pin, then if you wanted to do a transaction with your credit card, you'd swipe your credit card and all it's really pulling from that credit card is your 16 digit uh, card number and maybe four more digits for the expiry date as well. So it's really even going to be using probably 20, 25 anyway of those 40 characters. So it's encoded on that data and when you run it through the machine, the, uh, the the data is read from the card. Well, how is it done? Well, actually, it's really quite simple. You've got a solenoid, sol uh, solenoid here, which is just a bar magnet there with a, co a coil running around it. And what happens is when you run a card through the solenoid, it actually creates a current that flows depending on the alignment of the um, of the particular position where you're at. You know, the current will either flow one way or it will flow the other. And we can see that now. And all it does is when you run it through, it um, this current here is measured and detected by a microcontroller, which you've got here. And it takes that current and it converts it into a digital one or zero and sends that data on to the device, which then converts it into whatever format it is whether that's letters or numbers or whatever data is stored there so here if we just watch as it goes through as the card goes through the reader as soon as it gets to the point this current here is detected it's created detected by the microcontroller the microcontroller sends it to the computer and then once the computer's got all of the data it can then convert it into the correct format so that's how the readers work really really simple just have a solenoid 
microcontroller and then it passes it on to the computer after converting it into digital data. So what about writing to these cards? Because it's all right having this data that's already written, but if you're in a hotel and your guest comes along and they've lost their card and they need a new card, then you need to be able to write a new card for that guest because they're not going to want to wait outside of their room all night. So the writing to a card is really, really quite simple and it's just pretty much the same principle, the same operation, but in reverse. So first we take the, the data that they've got, whatever it needs to be, like a passcode. It's then converted into binary data, sent along to the microcontroller. And then this time around the microcontroller, it actually sends a um, current, it applies a current to the solenoid. And it applies a strong current to the solenoid this time. So strong, in fact, that it overwrites the magnetic polarity of any of the regions that it touches as it's going through. So let's have a look at that in action. Here we go. So our computer, it sends some data across. There we go. And the data, as it's getting sent across, the microcontroller applies a current to the solenoid, which writes this the regions that it's touching as it goes through. There we go. Okay, so the only thing to look at now at the end is now the advantages and disadvantages of magnetic stripe readers. Okay, so there's quite a number of advantages. Obviously, they're cheap to issue and replace. Um, this is really, really important, especially for um, banking because people lose their credit cards all the time or in hotels where guests lose their card. So you need to be able to replace those things cheaply, which is great. That works. Um, they're really easy to transport. You just literally just put them inside your wallet where, and you might have one card for your your store cards, one card for your access to the you know, your access card for your work. And you can also put your train tickets in there as well. Um, which is great. So that makes them really, really convenient. Data can be read far more quickly as well and accurately than done manually. This is one of the main reasons. If you're shopping, obviously time is money for um, for shops and they want to get their customers through the checkouts as quickly as possible. Uh, so literally just handing your store card allows you to, within a second, pr process your entire account number for your loyalty card, rather than having to say it manually and then make mistakes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, again, also data can be read, uh, written quickly as well. So if you're, um, for instance, a working at a train station and you're issuing train tickets, those cards can be issued within seconds, which is really, really convenient and makes them really useful. Uh, there are some disadvantages though. Um, obviously this data is stored magnetically and any strong magnetic field, I think it's over um, 4,000 Gauss or something, that's that kind of level, uh, will overwrite that, um, will overwrite the data stored there. So if you've got a bar magnet that uh, is near to that data, it will overwrite it, which is a problem. Um, also cardboard versions, so cardboard train tickets, they can be easily da damaged and if that would render them un unreadable. So they'll have to just, you know, read the, um, the ticket number out manually or something like that. Um, they can be cloned as well, really, really easily cloned, which is why they're not commonly used for banking. So if you're walking down the street, someone could take your uh, wallet out of your pocket really, really quickly, subtly, take your card, swipe it within the moment of almost a second or two seconds, swipe it through the machine, which then reads all of those banking details, and put it back in and put your wallet and your card will have been cloned without you even knowing. Um, or if you're in a restaurant or something like that, um, so a waiter's working in a restaurant, you hand them your card so they can swipe it. They take it out back, they swipe it on the, the machine that's the proper machine at the restaurant, but then they also swipe it on another machine that's in their pocket and they've got your banking details. Because of this, most um, banks now have replaced magnetic strip readers with chip and pin, which is much more secure or is supposed to be, although it is, has now been hacked. Um, also, some of the hardware can be quite expensive to install, especially in hotels. To install electronic uh, door readers, the magnetic stripe readers for all the doors in a hotel, if you've got 400 rooms, that's going to be quite a significant capital outlay. Um, so it's going to take quite a lot of time before you actually get that money back and it starts to save you money as a business. 
Okay, so that is Magnetic Stripe Readers. As always, I'll put all of the resources that I've got, links to all the resources, the uh, Scratch animations and the PowerPoint. I'll put all the links to that on the YouTube video. If you've got any comments or suggestions or requests for other videos, then please do drop me a comment in YouTube. I do read all the comments. And if you do like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.